important to understand that it's not healthy to blindly believe something. There is no such thing as healthy skepticism. Authenticity is the continual discovery of internal truth. Authenticity? Authenticity, more like. Skepticism is a transcendental state of consciousness. Where do you get your skepticism from? And I tell them, I get it from my higher chakras, and that's why I'm a transcendental skeptic. The actual vibration of doubt looks nothing like genuine uncertainty. I want you to feel for how skepticism robs things of energy. We can feel the difference between being doubted and being questioned. Our current definition of what is alive is incredibly inaccurate. We need to start defining alive in terms of consciousness. What constitutes something being alive is in fact the ability to be aware, to perceive, and to think. Talk to me! Doctor, I can't feel his pulse! Abruptly, the sound ceased. Suddenly, the desolation for solitude became unendurable. But suddenly, there was a change, the passing of something. I knew not what. Except now, all that remained was this gaunt quiet. Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Viruses and prions are an example of conscious beings which are very much alive, but which do not exhibit all of the traditional characteristics that we think constitute life. Tell us how you feel. How do I feel? I feel alive! Minerals, especially crystals, are also alive. Hmm. That is, they are conscious, they are aware, they think and they perceive. You know, just, just a thought randomly, uh, maybe words have definitions and maybe those definitions are actually of some kind of value. You could consider mineral energy to be the original manifestation of the consciousness that we call Mother Earth. You can't actually see it, but the energy is there. Which also is its own living being. You see that distance? There's a distance between... Uh, uh, you, you could just jump it, I suppose. Yeah, that, that you know, if there's a gap, you know, just make just make a leap of faith. But when we started to think that the physical cause was in fact the root cause of the illnesses and ailments which we experienced, we lost something very valuable. Someone was in the pod. The tracks go off in this direction. Look, sir. Droids. Look, a penny. Ailments begin mentally and emotionally. They then become physical. The physical cause of the illness that you see before you is just that. It is a manifestation of a deeper mental and emotional root cause. The body is reflecting what is happening in the mind and the emotions exactly. Close your eyes for a minute and I want you to imagine biting in to a lemon. Make it as real as possible. See if you felt that reaction back here in your jaw, the reflex to tasting something sour. There are no lemons in your vicinity, so why did that just happen? It happened because your mind doesn't know the difference between something you imagine and something that happens in its external reality. Everything that it perceives is real. Spiritual things are real. Oh, I can create experiences that aren't real, that seem real to me, to my mind. But spiritual experiences are real. But I can create experiences in my mind. But spiritual experiences are real. But I can create experiences in my mind. But spiritual experiences are real. And we know they can be created in people's minds. Hmm.
from non-physical perspective, which is eternal consciousness, source, which is that which we truly are, projects forth thought. Of course! From non-physical perspective, <coughs> which is eternal consciousness, <coughs> source, which is that which we truly are, projects forth thought. <coughs> Projects forth thought. When thought is focused on with enough intent and for a long enough duration, it becomes thought form. And when thought form is focused on with enough intent and for enough duration, it becomes physical form. When someone dies, their concept self sometimes has enough energy running through it that it can actually become a tulpa. That is, it can take on shape and sometimes still manipulate the physical dimension, which is what we see in the case of hauntings and full-blown poltergeists. Get off my train! Chocolate lines up planetarily with the sun. Chocolate is an octave of sun energy. In fact, it's the energy of the center of the sun. It's a male energy that comes down off the sun, and, and it actually, out of all the plants, the cacao is right on line, target of the center of the sun, which... Whoa, whoa, whoa.